Chapter 5, Miss Feldman Rules The night that Annabelle and Tiffany spent in Kate's classroom was like no other Annabelle could remember. At first, Annabelle could do nothing but worry. She worried that Kate would notice she was missing. She worried that Nora would notice Tiffany was missing. She worried about what the humans would think and whether the rest of their families would go, could go into doll state because of what the girls had done. And of course she worried about the dolls and the fun crafts and certain they would be terrified. Although as Tiffany pointed out, Auntie Sarah must have seen the girls disappear into the backpack. She would have been able to figure out where they were. Eventually Annabelle managed to stop worrying. Once she and Tiffany were certain the building was empty, Tiffany drove them through the hallways in a wooden dump truck they borrowed from Mrs. Eckgar's room. They investigated the cafeteria, the gym, the nurse's office, and Principal Hale's office. They read some books in the library. They looked at each other through a magnifying glass in room 201. They shouted and sang as loudly as they pleased. At last, though, they decided to locate Kate's room. They wanted to be able to watch Kate arrive the next morning. When they finally came across a classroom with a display of family photos on the bulletin board and saw a picture of Kate and Nora and their par parents and Grandma Catherine, they knew they were in the right place. They looked around until they found a cardboard carton. It was labeled M-I-S-C, and it had no lid, and it was full of dusty papers and rubber bands and pencils and boxes of chalk. Best of all, it had several small holes. Several small holes had been poked in the sides, perfect for seeing without being seen. The girls didn't know what Miss meant, but decided it probably wasn't important. So they crawled into the carton and settled down for the night. In the morning, they watched as the darkness in the room lightened to gray and as the sunset, sunshine crept in. Pretty soon, thought Annabelle, Kate will be here. Annabelle knew she would feel better just seeing Kate. The clock on the wall said 8 o'clock, exactly when Annabelle heard footsteps in the hall. She nudged Tiffany. A moment later, a tall woman carrying a thermos and two heavy tote bags walked into the room and set her things down on the teacher's desk. That must be Miss Feldman, Annabelle whispered to Tiffany. She looked at Feldman with interest. Kate, climbed, Kate claimed to love her fourth grade teacher. Annabelle had heard Kate tell Grandma Catherine that Miss Feldman was nice and fair and not mean and always listened and didn't have a teacher's pet. And also that she thought up fun projects for Kate and her classmates. The dolls watched as Mrs. Feldman poured herself a cup of coffee from the thermos that worked at her desk. After a while, she stood up and wrote a list of words on the green chalkboard behind her. She found a book and marked a place in it. She fed a hamster playing in a cage near her desk. She pulled a sheaf of papers out of the folder and was starting to read them when Annabelle heard noisy voices in the hallway. Miss Feldman glanced up. Hi, Mrs. Feldman, called two boys as they ran to the classroom. Good morning, James. Good morning, Ben. Are you ready to start a new project today? Yes, replied James. And I know who I'm going to interview, my great Aunt Bess. She used to play baseball. Three more children entered the room then. Annabelle looked eagerly for Kate. She squirmed and wiggled. What are you doing? whispered Tiffany. Hold still. I'm just trying to see. Where's Kate? She'll be here. Annabelle watched as three more boys and four girls entered the room. No Kate. Where is she? asked Annabelle. And suddenly there was Kate. She skipped into the room with two other girls. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Harmony. Good morning, Ayana, said Mrs. Feldman. Harmonian and Ayana? Those girls are Harmonio and Ayana, cried Annabelle. Annabelle, Tiffany hissed, you really have to be quiet. Someone's going to hear us. You don't want to go into doll state today, do you? If that happens, we'll be stuck here for three more days because today is Friday and you can't come around until tomorrow, which would be Saturday and... Okay, okay, said Annabelle. But she didn't feel grumpy only excited about finally seeing Kate and seeing her outside the house on Weatherby Lane. This was such a wonderful opportunity that Annabelle even forgot about her family, who she was certain must be very, very worried back home in the dollhouse. Through the hole in the box, Annabelle saw Kate sit at her desk and put some papers and books inside. Then she pulled something out of her pocket, leaned over, and tapped Harmony, who was sitting at the next desk. Cool, said Harmony. Oh, cool, said Ayanna as she joined them. Oh, cool, said a sing-song voice from behind them. Kate, Harmony, and Ayanna turned around sharply, and Kate stuck her hand back in her pocket. Go away, Francine, said Ayanna. Annabelle nudged Tiffany, who nodded. Here was awful Francine. 
Shouldn't look awful, though, Annabelle thought. Just like any other kid in the room. Nice socks, Francine said to Kate. Where do they come from? The baby department? No, exclaimed Kate. They... Francine, can I see you at my desk for a minute? said Mrs. Feldman. Francine made a face at Kate, then approached the teacher's desk. Yes, Miss Feldman, she said sweetly. Miss Feldman looked gravely at Francine. I'm thinking of something that is in the lobby of our school, she said. Something on the wall. Do you know what it is? Francine screwed up her face for a moment, and Annabelle thought she might give Mrs. Feldman a smart answer, like paint. But finally she said, our pride sign? That's right. Tell me what our pride sign, please. What's on our pride sign, please? Francine let out a great sigh. Friendship, respect, trust, responsibility, kindness, she recited. Yes, and when I hear you speaking to your classmates the way you spoke to Kate just now, I think you'd forgotten about the sign and about our class friendship rules. How do you think Kate feels when you talk to her like that? Did she look happy? No, replied Francine. Miss Feldman didn't say anything. So finally, Francine added, she looked like her feelings were hurt. And hurting someone's feelings on purpose is not allowed in this room. Please remember that, Francine. Okay. Annabelle watched fascinated. No wonder Kate sometimes said Mrs. Feldman rules. Tiffany was watching, of course, and now she turned to Annabelle in the box, grinned, and raised her fist in the air. Miss Feldman called to Kate to her desk, too, then. Kate, she said, Francine has something to say to you. I'm sorry, Kate, said Francine. Annabelle thought Francine sounded like talking to Tammy, a doll Nora used to own. She had not been a living doll, thank goodness. When Nora pulled a string in the back of talking Tammy's neck, the doll said, I'm hungry, or nighty night, or bye bye, or I love you, all in the same flat, dull voice. Francine didn't mean it, Annabelle whispered to Tiffany. I wonder why she's so nasty. She's a bully, Tiffany replied. A bell rang then, causing Annabelle to jump slightly. Miss Feldman called the class to order, and Annabelle and Tiffany spent the next few hours watching Kate and learning about nouns and the 13 colonies and tall tales and multiplication. Annabelle was wriggling with excitement again. She wished she could somehow attend a school for dolls. She knew that if she could go to the school, she would never be bored again. She wished, too, that Auntie Sarah were with her. Auntie Sarah would love fourth grade. All the same, when another bell rang later in the morning and Kate's class left their room for lunch and recess, Annabelle and Tiffany lost no time scrambling out of the carton. Watching Kate in school was great, but Annabelle was desperate to see her family again. Kate's room was now empty and silent. Miss Feldman had even turned out the lights as she followed her class into the hall. The coast is clear. Oh, Gronk wants some of the reading. The coast is clear, whispered Tiffany. Okay, but stick to the walls in case we have to hide suddenly, said Annabelle. As quickly as they could, Annabelle and Tiffany made their way to the door of the room. They peeked into the hallway. Quiet. So once again, they snuck through the little tunnel between the walls and the shoes and book bags and backpacks on the floor. All right, said Tiffany. Now comes the hard part. We have to cross the hallway. Kate's things are over here. Gronk is back again. Sorry, boys and girls. All right, said Tiffany. Now comes the hard part. We have to cross the hallway. Kate's things are over there. Annabelle looked up and down the hall. Okay, go, she cried. The dolls dashed across the open space to look uh, to the other side of the hall. Look, said Tiffany when they had safely reached the opposite wall. The scarf is still there. Perfect, replied Annabelle. She and Tiffany stood on top of the scarf. Above them was a coat, and above that the dangling straps of a backpack. Okay, up we go, said Tiffany. The dolls reached up and grabbed the bottom of the coat more easily than Annabelle had thought would be possible. Kate must have worn a different coat today, Annabelle decided. This one didn't have as many buttons, but it had enough, just to allow Annabelle and Tiffany to scramble upwards. When the dolls reached the collar of the coat, they grabbed the straps of the backpack and began to climb them. They had almost reached the top of the straps when a bell rang and suddenly the hallway was flooded with children and teachers. Quick, cried Annabelle alarmed. Hide in here. She and Tiffany dove into the nearest zippered compartment of a backpack. 
It's kind of stuffy in here, said Tiffany, squirming to find a comfortable position. I know, but we can't let anyone see us. Besides, there's nothing else in this pocket. No rocks or chewed up pencils. We have the place to ourselves. That's true, said Tiffany, and so the dolls settled in to wait for Kate to take them home. Chapter 6, A True Menace. The real menace today is Gronk while I'm trying to read. 